So my suspicion is because everything you need to know is on the BTC layer one. So that's the, the most robust database that humans have ever created, the more immutable with most hashing power behind it. So it's almost unthinkable of anyone being able to change that database. Mm. So everything you need to know about these artifacts is on chain, is nice. inside that database. I get it. So, and these artifacts are tradable and they are immutable and are durable and are, are fi finalized. So, nice. so from my perspective, this is a game changer. These are the best digital collectibles that you can create. Wow. We'll see what happens in the future, but my take is that we are seeing history right now. Right. The best digital collectors that you can create and own. Those are the words of the papa, one of the papas of the pepes. What up, vigilantes? I'm here in Anarchapulco with who I consider one of the top NFT artists in the world. I call him one of the papas of the pepes. If you've ever seen Pepe the Frog, if you guys have heard of Pepe the Frog, Pepe the Meme, well, this is the papa of the pepes. Gus, ¿cómo estás? Hey, Bienvenido. what's up, man? Gracias. Yeah, we are just here in the pool in Acapulco. Great event. Um, I have a spot there with some cool art in case anyone's interested can just go and take a look. I have some augmented reality, NFTs, and crypto art and Bitcoin art. So I think it's really cool. So check it out if you if you can't. So I met you at Liberland at the Liberland. Um, I've met you before in the past, and uh, I, you're like the NFT dude, bro. Like, and you've been involved in this game since Counterparty. Can you tell? Let's go over a history of NFTs, will you? I mean, I think. Okay. Yes. Yes. But let's just Be, do that. because something very interesting is happening right now, and in order to have a better perspective of why it's important, I sh I think sh we should probably make like a quick review of the history of what people call NFTs, because cool. NFTs is a confusing term. Like I don't like it. Like it is is not accurate. It just brings more confusion. So the original idea was to craft digital objects that you could uh, that you could trade and you can uh, buy or sell or you or, or, or the digital objects that have certain properties like physical objects for instance if you have like a physical object like this rock this is hard you can give it to someone else it's it's harder to destroy than than to to build it back again and so basically the idea is when you have an object like this because it's scarce and it's hard and it's tradable, it might it, it has the possibility of gaining market value, right? right. That, that's the whole idea behind it. And we know for a fact that since the 90s, all the cypherpunks were trying to have something like this in the digital world. Thank you. Muchas gracias, gracias José. Cheers, Cheers man. man. So going back to the 90s we know for a fact that they were already trying the cypherpunks like there's a famous post from Hal Finney that they were trying to to craft digital objects objects that have properties like this rock that you can send them that you can receive them that are durable etc but this was not possible because we didn't have digital scarcity but when when we developed Bitcoin, when Bitcoin was developed in, in, and started working in, in 2009, a lot of experiments pop up trying to pursue this idea. Idea of digital objects that work like a, like a Bitcoin. Like if right. I have a Bitcoin, I can send it to you and then I don't own it anymore. You own it. Right. And you can send it to someone else and so on. So they try to do these kind of things with other objects. And we, ha we have evidence of very early... Um, inscriptions inside the bitcoin blockchain yeah trying I, to create art so one day one day i was in austin texas um and i was getting my first vpn i still remember my first vpn that i was paying with bitcoin because this company i forgot the name of the i think it was a pia but they were taking bitcoin 
as uh, for their VPN, and I'm like, shit, man, that's cool. I can pay for my VPN with Bitcoin. So I, I was at this bar, and I was uh, buying the VPN. I see these guys who I've heard them talking about Bitcoin. I go and talk to them, and, the, and, and they're like, yeah, man, we were, like, really fucking early. We were there in the mailing, like, pretty much in the mailing list. We, we were some of the first miners, but we fucking hate Bitcoin. And I'm like, well, hi, dude. I mean, it was, like, trading around 100 bucks at that point. And, and they're like, we hate it because we sold so early. They sold that like 15 cents. And, and then they started, they were just really jaded. And, and then they started telling me that, uh, that they, they had pictures, that they put pictures on the Bitcoin blockchain. And if I remember correctly, it was block 70, one of 71, 75, one of the blocks has a Guy Fox mask. <laughs> so yeah, so keep going, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, uh, I, the, well, I mean, the first... The first time that someone put an extra content on the blockchain is Satoshi with the Genesis block, because we all know that he made a reference to the to the to the this newspaper from the UK, the Times, yes. with a, with the announcement of of the of the councilor, you know, like uh, doing this bailout on the banks. So I mean, even from inception, Satoshi already gave some extra content inside the block, not just economical transactions yeah and I, I remember this I, I think it was 2011 or 12 there there's this uh, drawing of uh, uh, of ASCII code I, I think in English it's ASCII ASCII, ASCII code uh, so there are already like people making drawings stuff like that but these these inscriptions were not tradable they were not like tokens, like what we call tokens nowadays. They were more like like little drawings inside the database that are never going to change because it's an immutable database. So right. that was good enough for certain people. They were experiments. But right. then with colored coins and eventually later with tokens, people found a, a smart way to trade symbols of value. So you create a, a colored coin or a token, which are different things, but for... for for practical reasons, they work kind of the same. You create one of these tokens and I can send it to you and you can send it to someone else. And people start giving extra meaning to those tokens. And that's how like the first attempts of tokenized art came about. So maybe 2014 and 15 in the Bitcoin blockchain, people were creating tokens with counterparty and they were giving those tokens an extra value by signaling to some other content, it could be an image on a on a on, on a regular website, uh, or you can like hash the, the the code of the image into the op return. The, this is special entry on the Bitcoin blockchain, and this really had its moment in 2016 when they s made the same exercise, but with memes. The Pepe the Frog meme, yeah, which was already a very popular meme. This was around what time? Like 220. This is what this was 2016. 2016. So the okay. meme was already there. It was already famous. The frog. There were a lot of directories in in 4chan and Reddit of people just like making directories of their favorite designs of the frog. Yeah. But when when some guys on Telegram decided to use these designs and correlate them to a token, that's when. A, an, or, an organic market just exploded and this created like the first digital collectible market that we have ever seen which and was called the the rare pepe director rare pepe director yes mm -hmm. okay. this was 2016 i remember the homer pepe selling for like forty thousand dollars yeah exactly yeah. in the first live auction of a crypto collectible in january 2018 okay but but since inception of these kind of markets the idea just grew more and more right and immediately ethereum was already working at the time and people start merging like like uh taking this idea to ethereum and since the ethereum protocol is more flexible and, and it's turing complete you can do more stuff in theory you can do anything you want that's what they say yeah i, I mean in my store in my in my, in my uh no i can i think bitcoin is more flexible and bitcoin is turing complete but that's why we had a civil war and i think ethereum was part of it Ethereum was part of that PSYOP to move um, the embrace of the computational power of Bitcoin out away from the Bitcoin blockchain. So that's my perspective as a big blocker. So you were saying? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. That's a debate, right? Yeah. That's why you, there was a civil war. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and the most of the market, va the, the market moved to BTC, 
which are the small blockers. Yes. And uh, there, there have always been big blockers advocating to putting more stuff on the Bitcoin blockchain. But then there are trade-offs, and that's like a big drama and, and, and yeah. open argument that, that will never end. Yeah. But, but my point is that this, this protocol, Counterparty, has been always working since 2014 on BTC. Yes. And this was one of the easiest ways to create these tokens and then associate these tokens to something else. And then Ethereum did this in, in a more user-friendly manner. So they start building marketplaces and all the punks and the uh, crypto kitties came along and they created just bigger markets and like bigger communities start growing around these more flexible user-friendly collectibles right but right. when you when you dis dissect when you analyze how these collectibles are built they are not ideal they are not f f fin finalized objects they, uh, they sometimes depend on different entries on different networks. So, for instance, most of them, they are just an entry on the database, in this case, the Ethereum blockchain. Correct. It creates an entry, a, a token that you can move around, and that token, mo f for the most part, most of them, they point to an extra content, like an image or a video, that is stored on another network, like IPFS and so on. Or mo most of the time, it's Amazon servers. Yeah, exactly. So, which is mm -hmm. funny to me. I always made fun of Ethereum NFTs because it's like, they're not really on chain. They're not on chain. They're just a hash. And uh, it's a proof of, now it's the proof, it's proof of Amazon server. That's all it is to me. Exactly. And, and so to for, me, they're not real NFTs. And Anything for, on Ethereum. And for that reason, yeah. they are censorable. Exactly. So, so I, I mean, in the last few years, OpenSea have been actively censoring uh, images that they have on their servers because they don't comply with copyright laws or because they think they are offensive or for whatever reason like right. any censoring mechanism we know that always plays in favor of whoever have the power of censoring yes. so that's happening in open sea it could happen in big platforms like super rare and uh, so these objects are not ideal as objects of private property because someone else can take the most important part of it which is the image or the digital content the part that the artists consider the art yeah right like the jpegs and stuff like that they can just shut shut them down so there's there are ways to store the image inside the ethereum blockchain but it's super expensive and to yes. my knowledge there's not a big market for that because people are just doing those other schemes like right putting a token here putting the image there putting the metadata so, somewhere else the metadata and the token depends on a smart contract which ultimately depends on a on a on an admin yes. that can also censor those tokens so it's it's a mess yes. now since we had the last two updates, like the, like the, the big update in BTC, what, the, the one that created all the drama was Segwit, in where they take took away part of the transaction that is called the witness. They put it somewhere else, in a way that you can prune it. You can you you can you don't need to sync the witness in in a in a more uh, you know what is called the prune node. And then with the, with the last update last year in 2022, they made a new update that is called Taproot, where you can make a new kind of multisigs in, in an easier way, and you can store more data on the BTC network. Right. And those two updates make it easier to put content inside the Bitcoin blockchain that is not restrained to the 80 megabytes of the OP return. So there, there has always been ways of putting extra data on the Bitcoin blockchain, but now with these new updates, they develop a new protocol that is called Ordinals, and you can just store way more data, as much as four, four megabytes, which is the actual block limit for the, the implemented by the Bitcoin Core updates, right? Yeah. So. It, a lot of people are skeptical. I'm, 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 I'm been trying to to learn as much as I can in the past couple of weeks, and there are the very, very divided opinions. But what's clear is that this is having a lot of demand. Like people are rushing into creating their own artifacts inside the Bitcoin blockchain because, different from what we had in the past, these artifacts are. 
fi finalized. How do you say this? Like finalized, finalized. Finalized. They find their finality on chain. Exactly. They have the, finality. The content is on chain. The picture the is picture on chain. The picture is on chain. Yes. Exactly. So from data on chain, you can extract anything you need to know. Exactly. Who owns it? What's the what's the metadata? Wh what's the, the the quality of the image itself? You can pull it out of the blockchain, and you can transfer it. So this is a digital object, like this rock, but in the metaverse. And you can transfer it, you can sell it, you can inherit it to your grandchildren. You can do whatever you want with it. This it could is even be programmable. Pro it could be programmable. I mean, we'll see how, how this evolves. But different from what a lot of uh, except, uh, skeptics are saying, I think this is going to have a tremendous market. This is, this is showing to have a tremendous demand. I know that it's possible to, to that, that it might grow into a into a kind of bubble and then pop and, and, and have like a correction. That's that's much likely that's gonna happen. But for me it's clearly there's gonna be a big demand for storing data on the Bitcoin blockchain, on chain on layer one. And that data can be transferable and it's gonna be immutable forever. Yeah. So yeah, this is exciting. Like a lot of people, I mean, we are all rushing into yeah! putting our own inscriptions. Yeah, <laughs> data on chain, baby, woo! We're all big blockers now. So yeah, do, uh, so look, man, I think I think uh, this, uh, the whole narrative of like Bitcoin just being digital gold is dead. Because now everybody knows that this is possible. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't want to throw that narrative right away through the window because, I mean, there are, there are so many aspects of this. Look, of course. If, I mean, it's if, still digital gold. Yeah, exactly. Like, but now it's a, an amazing place to... It's like a beautiful art gallery it, now. It's, it's just that some some ma Bitcoin maximalists that are very loud and that are, they are a small minority, they uh, so for some reason they believe that they have like a bigger saying of what Bitcoin is and they try to control other use cases of Bitcoin, right, in yeah. the community. That's why we had a civil war, because those same guys, um, you know, they, 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 they we had this, the, the civil war because of that, because those, that same small group of people think themselves the owners of the protocol. But, but at and the same that's time, wrong. Let, let's make a difference between who are the toxic maximalists or people who who call themselves maximalists because they believe that we should maximize the the powers of bitcoin and then people that were small blockers for for good arguments like for technical reasons that they they brought really good technical arguments sure and people that that believe that bitcoin should be digital gold instead of cash to pay your coffee in the morning so I mean, there's a there's a whole ecosystem of different what, different okay, perspectives. But, but why would one why would one perspective impose its will on the rest? No, I, I you think, see what I'm saying. It's like yeah. that's that, and that's the question here. Is like, who are you? Or you know, I'm talking about anybody. Who are you to tell me that my transaction is valid or not? I don't care about your opinion. If yeah, I so, can, well, if I have the ability to do this transaction on chain mm -hmm. and there's a, a willing market for it then i'm gonna do it no no i mean that's great. the whole point that's yeah. why Bit bitcoin is censorship resistant the idea exactly. is that as long as you play by the rules no one should be able to have a saying if your transaction is good or bad right right like people are talking about illegitimate transactions that for me that's bullshit like it exactly. doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense exactly either your transaction is valid or not is it playing by the consensus rules or not and if it does abide by the consensus rules is valid period 100 percent. so so by the consensus rules these transactions are valid and you can store that on the bitcoin blockchain and that's amazing because people are finding fun ways to play with Bitcoin, and and some some purists of Bitcoin of, of BTC say, okay, these transactions might might much likely are going to be priced out in the in the in the short term. I don't think so. I think it's more likely that, that the boring transactions are going to be priced out by <laughs> by the meme transactions. That's right. Hey, cheers to that, bro. <laughs> yeah, Fuck yeah. yeah, man. Yo, I've always told you guys that the pilots of the Bitcoin protocol are the artists and. To me, an artist is more important than a developer, honestly speaking, because an, on, an artist tells us where we're going. Um, it, it shows us, it gives us a dream, gives us a future. An artist is someone who, 
The technology is already made, and artist shows us also what a potential tyrannical future could look like, like Alex Huxley and and George Orwell did with with their books, right? Um, so yeah, man, uh, it's it's incredible how art, in a very symbolic and literal way, is breaking the mental chains of the Bitcoiners. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you that artists are very important. I don't know if more than the developers. I mean, I, I say, no, I, I, I think, think so. I think, I, so. I think I, they they 100% just think so. play different roles in in a team with with uh, and, and when goals are al aligned, uh, I think it's it's powerful, right? Sure, yes. And and people from 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 do, that are very good at doing PR and people that are very good at doing design, like. Everyone plays a role, yes, and, of course, and, yes. and 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 we need to look for aligning our goals to make like powerful moves and communities. I, I completely agree mm -hmm. with you. I completely agree with you. Um, and, and and the art it's always been, uh, uh, um, uh, well, it, it's been trying to push the boundaries. And that's so, what art does, right? Um, so it shows us. It gives us a vision of what could be possible. Pushes the boundaries and challenges everyone. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean. Like the artists uh, are the leaders. And, and you know? the, yeah, exactly. In that regard, artists are the leaders of, yes. of creating disruptive ideas. Yes. And 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 I, a lot of like history has shown that those disruptive ideas they always get a pushback from from the normies or from yeah. the, of the conservatives, right? <laughs> exactly. Always, and and yeah. that's that's happening. That that has happened. Like I I just made a meme a few days ago with putting the example of jazz and modern art. And then memes, right? Uh, yeah. So people were like complaining that jazz was not real music, right? Or that modernism was like like a shitty art or a shitty architectural trend. And then we have memes nowadays, and people call memes that people say that memes are not art or they are. <laughs> I, that's because it's different it's or different. graffiti. I, I think that this kind of 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 inscriptions on the Bitcoin blockchain, I see it more like graffiti. Like it's a yeah. way of putting graffiti on the That's immutable cool. database, <laughs> and, and and to be honest, like people might like it or not, but graffiti is not gonna go away. Right. Like graffiti is one of the most powerful cultural forces that we've seen in the last century. Yeah, man, and Banksy. Just think of Banksy. Exactly. Right? Just think of Shit. Banksy, and and just think of all the like the great graffiti artists that are doing illegal, amazing paintings all over the big cities and and those people just like are so good at doing what they do and so convinced that even if it's legal if they are persecuted by the police even if they are shamed by by the society they they are confident that they are bringing to the world a positive force of creativeness so i, I think that so memes beautiful. on the blockchain yeah. is following kind of the same laws of physics it's like this this powerful call that creative people have and they just can't help trying to make graffiti on the database and that's what they are doing they are putting inscriptions inside the immutable database and there's no way to stop that even if they find a way to 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 shut down this particular protocol or 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 they find a way for nodes to reject this special kind of transactions there are always ways to to get around those censorship mechanisms because the 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 genius is already out of the bottle. Like pe people 100%. are just going to try to keep on doing this kind of digital graffiti. A hundred percent. I love this. Um, it, it, this is incredible. So, like yesterday, uh, one sold for what? Almost a quarter million dollars. Yeah, I don't even want to follow those those, those <laughs> Discord trading uh, groups because I, I'm nine crazy. point five BTC. Fuck, man. Yeah, I'm working hard on my next inscription. I already, <laughs> I, I, I already made a couple of 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 artwork that I had before. Yeah, just to like to test how it works. A friend of mine that already seen his full because that's another important thing. Yeah, <laughs> I've never seen in my whole time of being in Bitcoin. I've never seen so many people sinking their full notes right as fast as they can. One hundred percent. So th this is just driving adoption. A hundred percent, and and it's and for the first time, like the whole small blocker camp is be is is uh, is now introduced to this beautiful world of creativity on chain, which us big blockers like it's our thing. It's the, what we're all about. So it's uh it's it's just fascinating to see how 
No, for my opinion, in my opinion, to be completely honest, man, the small block room narrative did die in this past week. It de it's dead. Because you can't ever put this genie back in the bottle, like you said. It's Bitcoin is going to be an art gallery forever. Like, I give you the example, right? Think of New York City, right? And New York City has, you know, it's a metropolis, but it has no nightclubs, no bars, no restaurants, no theater, no movies, no art galleries, nothing fun. And one day, you open up, you open like up like the first cool nightclub, bar. the first yeah. nightclub, what's going to happen? Yeah, people are gonna go exactly running. That's what happens in that's what's happening in BTC right now. Yeah, I, I mean, just just to be fair, like, I I wouldn't like to like strawman the small blockers, like like being re restrained to uh, just like a one megabyte block or something like that. That that's never been the plan. Like, definitely there's a roadmap in where blocks should keep uh, growing. Do you know where that roadmap is? I've never seen it. Yeah, I mean, I know that the, like the other bitcoins like B BCH and BSV, they have already like opened opened the blocks. Yeah. But like, wh what I'm trying to say is that the argument for having four megabytes blocks in in BTC, uh, it's a technical argument that that is is fair to 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 try to. I mean, I I don't like to strawman that argument because they it have some some. <laughs> some technical sense to it uh, I mean if that was the case then then we should censor ordinals because it's gonna limit that capacity I know I don't I don't think that follows necessarily well let me tell you what's happening right now mm -hmm. is is that they're gonna shotgun ordinals from now on where they're gonna just do mints like a mint series a series of mints okay. so right now you're only seeing like one ordinal like in one block in one block of time so a series is going to be like doing a series of a hundred blocks of time all full with a series of nfts <laughs> i mean that's possible yeah that, that's, that, that, so, that, so that's going to completely do away with any I functionality mean, of the bitcoin blockchain as a slow crippled money but, that they've but, been having but we can definitely argue that opening the blocks might just bring more of that and will not solve the the problem necessarily no no exactly so, the, the thing is is that this is not gonna stop and right now there's gonna the next thing you're gonna see in the next day or two uh, well this is the first thing you're gonna see is a series being done so it's gonna be like a hundred blocks that are gonna be threatened with like but, being but, completely full at the same time but, but we need to be aware that then, that, that would be like super expensive like even right now even with the, with this it's eight hundred dollars even hundred dollars right now but per, even, per block so if you do a series of of a hundred well it's eight hundred times that no but to fool the block is way more because i mean it's a hundred blocks like if you if you oh yeah the whole hundred blocks is gonna be more but yeah but right now right now to fill up one block it would cost you eight hundred dollars no, I, I, I'm not sure about that number. You know, we were doing the math yesterday. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I could be wrong, you know, but... No, I mean, to, to pay, to outprice the f regular fees in a full block is way more than $100. No, like, 800. Uh, 800. I said 800, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so, I mean, still... If uh, there's a market demand, there's going to do it. So, look, this is what's going to happen is, is that a lot of people are doing this, are going to do, are going to show by doing... Mm -hmm. And they're going to do crazy things. Even if it costs money, they're going to... Because this is the thing about the world of NFTs, right? Mm -hmm. It's the first one to do it. So I met the guy, a guy in Miami who was talking about like, he had the first physical object in his, like, merce. Mm -hmm. That was a first physical object that's an NFT. And he's, like, walking around showing me, like, Raph, this is between one... This is, like, $1.5 million to $2 million right here. And I grabbed it, and I'm like... And it's, like, a hologram, real cool thing. And, um, but he was the first. Anytime there's the first, the first guy to put music on the uh, as an NFT to sell music, that's that guy's gonna sell. You know what I'm saying? So, the first one to do this series, it's gonna be costly, but because it is the first time to do it, it's it's gonna it's gonna be profitable. So it's always been like that, from what I've seen. That the first one to do something makes a lot of money. So I know right after that, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna start seeing music as ordinals. 
and the first Would artist you? to do that. I, I, I think that my friend uh, DJ Jay Skrilla already uploaded his full album what? as an inscription. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. See, I because so you, you run with another crew of people than I do. Mm -hmm. Your crew is like NFT world badasses. My crew is more like big blockers that are like creating the marketplaces for ordinals. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So that's yeah, fucking yeah. awesome. I didn't know that. Damn. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, amazing. Skrilla was the first DJ on with putting music on the blockchain back in the day with the counterparty okay. first uh, 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 marketplaces. And now as soon as we start learning about this new protocol, wow. I mean, there was a rush of people trying to mint. And the other day I, I, I saw in one of the groups that he said that he already uploaded an album. Are you so, fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. So that's incredible. It's man. incredible. Like this has no. It's already limits. happened. It's already happened. Yeah. I, I thought we. Shit, you're heading me now. <laughs> Dang, this is incredible. Yeah, I, I, I just. Wow. I, I'm trying to learn as fast as possible how how to upload different format, like how exactly the ordinal wallet works, to see what are the advantages and disadvantages of of uploading different uh, uh, encode. En, en, codes like content digital content in different codes so because right now ideally you want to do it in a web compatible language in order to being able to pull it off and see the image right. if you make it in some obscure language it might be i don't know it's not going to be such a flashy nft or or maybe it could have a not different properties we don't know we are in a very early stage everything is experimental so uh, I'm really excited to see how it's going to play out. But I mean, this is this is going to be exciting, and more and more people are going to come out, come down with ideas. Yeah, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. So uh, what uh, what do you want to show your NFTs on Ordinals? How well, do they find you? I uh, I still don't don't know an easy way to browse. I mean, the, if you go to Ordinals.com, uh, there's like a list of all the Ordinals that have been. Uh, uploaded so far and they are already in the or ordinalswallet.com yeah, it's it, going to be the way to browse pretty probably, soon ordinalswallet.com okay uh -huh. and uh, but I, I don't know like other than giving you the exact number of the ordinal or the inscription that I made because it, there are different things like ordinals is the protocol and then these NFTs these objects or they, they, they are these um, they called it artifacts these artifacts are inscripted inside the Bitcoin blockchain. So they call them inscriptions and the inscriptions are numbered. So other than giving you the exact number of the inscription, I don't know any better way right now to browse through all the, the inscriptions that have been made so far. Yeah, yeah, there's so people, it's, they're, it's they're, too early. they're like, I know of like at least three amazing teams working on, on different um, like marketplaces. Yeah. And, and, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we're going to see very soon. Like, just in the past three days, someone came out with this bot. Yeah, like, Ordinal's bot, so you don't have oh, to yeah, have run a full you, node. You don't have to, exactly. So, That's I mean, so cool. this is going super fast. So, I'm sure we're going to see cool wallets, user-friendly marketplaces, and a lot of different collections very soon. People who haven't been in, in the NFT ecosystem underestimate how much demand these objects, these artifacts have in the open market. So I, I know, you know, but a lot of, I think that a lot of Bitcoiners are going to be very surprised of how much demand these, these artifacts have. Yeah, 100%. I actually think that like the, the Web3 is led by NFTs. NFTs are way bigger than what people think. Like I think of NFTs as representative of everything in existence and and so I see NFTs being like extremely important not just for the physical space but also because we're gonna have uh, marketplaces for everything using an NFT so for example if you're if you're a, a if you're a, a, a musician and you put up an uh, your music as an NFT you better have a beautiful like visual display for me to buy your music does that make sense like it's mm -hmm. it's like it's like there's much more than to to all of this like i i foresee a future where people are going to be selling um tokens i mean nfts that come with prizes in different websites 
that are like token locked, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I foresee a future where we're going to have a, a creator market and we're going to have a, a market of creatives and we're going to have creator tokens where like if you if you meet a kid that is like really a really good basketball player, you will like invest in his creative token. And then when he's in the NBA, you're going to be like doing great. But the whole time the kid had a fan club and people trading and buying mm -hmm. his token, which is going to help him in his career. So I, I foresee a future of, of a lot of creativity where human creativity is going to be completely unleashed. And, and, and it is going to be through human creativity that we're going to onboard people. So I'll give you an example. In, in BSV, we're like really far ahead in, in all of this. And so for us, it costs one three hundredth of a penny to, uh, to mint an NFT on chain. One three hundredth of a penny in BSV. Wow. Okay, so that means we can subsidize it easily. Like with three hundred dollars, that's two, twenty thousand mints, right? Twenty thousand mints. I can give three hundred three thousand dollars, and right away, all of the artists, any artist, can come and mint for free. They don't need to change their fiat for BSV. They just come in and fucking just plug and play. Just grab the a wallet and grab the wallet, put their art, and get paid in Bitcoin. So it's like the creative process is going to be free to mint. It's going to be you're going to be able to you post and mint at the same time. And since it all happens on chain, this is what shit that we're doing in BSV already, which I'll tell you that it's probably not going to be it's not going to be possible on BTC. But the moment you buy an NFT, let's say I buy your NFT at that moment, since it's on chain, the rest of the world can bid for that NFT to me. I'm the NFT holder. So you understand what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. automatic bidding right away so the mo the post is the mint onboarding problem this solve because you come into bitcoin you come into crypto with your own creativity when you have tiny the ability to, to have a, a, an economy at scale like we do in bitcoin's original design bsv and so so we're just at the cusp of this man i'm telling you i'm telling you we're just at the cusp of this and it's gonna explode yeah i agree like for uh, as you're saying like just for for patronage uh, nfts and tokens in general are, are like the best vehicle that we have seen in, in human history so anyone can sponsor anyone else uh, around the world with no restrictions with no borders so that's one of the best use cases i, I think that that we're gonna see and we are seeing growing so what is your opinion on nfts uh, that are private that come from like a private protocol have you looked into Dero? Dero NFTs? No, I, I I don't know. Oh, you gotta look. I got okay. So, so what, what do you mean by private? Okay, so the protocol for Dero, think of Ethereum, but private by default, like 100% ah, okay, okay. private. Okay. okay, for privacy, you mean? Yes, okay. it's completely private. The protocol is private. Everything's private. Mm -hmm. There's there are NFT marketplaces being built on Dero right now. Uh -huh. There's one which is a DeroNFTs.com, okay. and now that's yeah, something i mean that's amazing like yeah. protecting privacy it's it's a is 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 very important so also with these ordinals which is the same as with counterparty like you don't need to give any kind of information you can create as many wallets as you want as many addresses as you want on on, on those wallets and as many tokens as you, as you want by you can buy them and sell them without giving any kind of personal information. So these are all completely private markets. So uh, I mean that's very different from that is really from, cool. from from the Ethereum craze from the last oh, few years. You're right? right because it's a UTXO model. So since exactly. you can spin up as many addresses, you don't give up your identity. You never give up. Your oh identity. my God! So this the, the, is so. There, cute, are, there are there are famous there are some famous pepes like there, I I I remember this particular one that is called Melancholia that no one knows who's the creator, and they they I mean, I mean someone created them, and they I think they they move them around a little bit, and then that account holder either died or disappeared or lose his keys no one knows who who, who, the, who they are no way so they already have demand they are valuable uh artifacts and they are completely anonymous and with the wow. counterparty protocol they, they have this very cool feature that is called dispensers when you can create a vending machine and this is completely anonymous 
you create your vending machine for anyone to send Bitcoin BTC to that vending machine and you will get back to the sending address, the token, the NFT with no with no KYC or any kind of, of, of okay, revealing. You, you, please derby. repeat that again. Because if I need you to repeat it, I think they need you to repeat it again. Okay, Explain so, that again, please. So, so in Counterparty, there is a feature called dispensers, which for practically there are digital vending machines. So imagine a vending machine, but it's just made out of code. So that vending machine, you, you put your NFTs inside and you set the price of those NFTs. So anyone sending BTC to that address, to the address of the vending machine, if they send the right amount, which you already previously said, right. if they send the right amount of BTC, they will automatically, in an atomic swap, they will get back the NFT to the sending address. And you don't, you don't need to make any kind of, you don't need to reveal any kind of, of personal data. That's, that's a completely anonymous market. The same is the DEX, the, the decentralized exchange of counterparty, is completely anonymous. And and these new artifacts, the inscriptions with the uh, ordinals protocol, yeah. it, they, they, uh, my guess, I'm almost certain that in, in a very short time, we're going to start seeing these kind of vending machines with atomic swaps wow. so people can create private markets. That's like relatively easy to do. Wow, dude. That's completely anonymous market. Dude, that's freaking beautiful. It's beautiful, man. Dude, you're blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe they're already doing Ordinal's music and this anonymous market. On and, and it, honestly, it's super cool because oh like, my it, they don't depend in, on any third party. So I just like I have my 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 pepes, right? right, or my counterparty tokens. Every now and then, I fill those vending machines, and I just forget about it, and I come back one month two months later to check if anyone bought any of my tokens and sometimes surprise surprise i have a little bit more btc in one of these vending machines because someone has been buying my my nice. tokens and so i just take out the money or leave it there whatever i want no one knows who created who created them and right. no one knows who's buying them so so, uh, so i mean so you're still living off like the things that you did in counterparty to this day, uh, I as do, an artist, I, I do sell uh, tokens wow. in a regular basic, wow. and that's because I just went completely the gen from the very beginning, nice. and some of my tokens I created billions, like with a B. So I, ca <laughs> I, I have like 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 the zombie pepes is one of the the, the, pepes, the, yeah. the pepes that have like a bigger issuance, and I have just like enough to give everyone in the world. So I just sometimes set up these vending machines and people can get them for like a few dollars, right? Nice. And that's like a just like a, a real passive income, right? Dude, that's like so a, cool. <laughs> so almost 10 years of wor a, a work ago and you're still making profit yeah. off of that. Well, yeah, they're from 2016 and 17. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's still oh like you can do these years, years in the past yeah. and, and you just set up these these vending machines which are immutable in a way right and and uh, and i'm predicting that with this new protocol the ordinals you're going to be able to do this with with utxos right. so it's going to be way more immutable because at the end of the day counterparty depends on counterparty nodes but with these ordinals like i mean you just need a, a, a an ordinal protocol but you don't need any extra data that it's outside the on the layer one so wow. you're going to be able to set up these uh, to these vending machines with uh, pre-signed transactions for right. anyone to just go and buy these artifacts and just leave them there for five, ten years and maybe come back then and just pick up the your BTC gains. Like this, uh, this is amazing. I, you know, I mean, it exists, and you can just copy paste it actually from from uh, RelayX.com because that's what RelayX. That's how RelayX works okay. on, on BSV. Mm -hmm. um, so you literally, they could, ju they just need to. Actually, I'm pretty sure the RelayX team is probably doing that right now. Probably. Because mm -hmm. literally that's how, you know, now you describe it more carefully, mm -hmm. I realize that that's exactly I, how RelayX I, works. I, I don't know if the development or most of the development in BSB will work on BTC because this particular uh, new thing with the ordinals requires SegWit and Taproot. Oh, right. Trust me, they got this, man. <laughs> okay. okay, I don't know. Yeah. So like Ordinals NFT, Ordinals wallet comes from BSV. Oh. And uh, 
from one of the crews in BSV. And and what you're talking about right now, that vending machine is pretty much what I think the Twitch guy, the the Relay X team is doing. Well, so, the, yeah, yeah. The, the vending machine is from the Comic I mean, Party yeah. Protocol. Because uh -huh. we, 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 we have a lot of experience building these type of things with the UTXO model. Because mm -hmm. if you understand, like, the history of Bitcoin, um, everybody went to use the account-based model of Ethereum when they were told that they couldn't do it on the Bitcoin blockchain. So us big blockers, we were like, no, screw you. We're going to show you guys. And we're going to just do it. And we have. And so we are the most experienced at programming data on chain and, and computing script is what we call it our when we call smart contracts we call it computing script so we have the most experience in computing script with the utxo model so so yeah man i mean you're you made me realize something huge in that since these this is the first the ordinals since they are based on the utxo model people can't get spam so let's say obama buys an ordinal it's not like people can send them dirty Bitcoin because they don't know who his address is. It's just they have it's just the ordinal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, 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 he's not gonna, it, yeah, exactly. You're not going to like contaminate his entire Bitcoin stash like they did with people in Ethereum. Because in people in Ethereum, their their address for their like, let's say like their um, ape yacht club, whatever, was the same address where they keep their Ethereum. Because yeah, it's an yeah, account based uh, model. Yeah. So it, it's like and, and people on Ethereum, design, really, they, like, they, they don't come from the same principles of privacy and stuff like that. Like yeah. that, that was very clear with the right. ENS system, right? That those all of those Twitter accounts with their dot ETH, yeah. you know, that's like like the worst, uh, you, you know, like, <laughs> like the worst way of doxing yourself. Oh uh, yeah, so, one hundred percent. But that's because they have different. They come from different values basically yeah they're the people, different yeah so you, you for, as from someone that comes from the artist world like you deal with um with all types of people and in the ethereum community having different va values like um how do you do you do you see them like not caring about privacy at all i will say that most of them don't care yeah i mean there are a few with the people on ethereum that have some cypherpunk ideas and they have a little bit of of values, cypherpunk values, uh, I must say, but they are a minority. Like most of them, they, they are more like they have more millennial values. They Which are is like, what, like running around streaking naked and yeah, well, yeah. I mean, they are what, way what more it? concerned about social justice and like I They're mean, woke. They, they are they are way more woke. It's woke for woke sure. culture. Uh -huh. And they, they 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 see the bitcoiners as. Uh, as in, like like toxic in nature for no reason like they don't understand why some bitcoiners are so 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 strong in their beliefs of privacy and decentralization and so on so yeah i mean and and then obviously when their tokens get censored on OpenSea, they go and complain to the to the admins of, of open like like i right. don't know like the same way that they would do to their governments, right? Right, they go right. And protest. They throw and protests. Like okay, well, I mean, they like they like that model of protest. I mean, I have a really good friend. Like most of the artists that jump into the NFT yeah. craze in the past two or three years, right? They they just came right into Ethereum. Correct. Yes. So I I mean, some of them on the like the smart ones are more libertarians. They understand the values, but they are way more into the ETH. Ethereum ecosystem, and I've seen uh, people with very, very different values. Not all of them. I have great friends on the Ethereum community. Uh, it's just like they are not so hardcore principled on privacy, sovereignty, anti-state, you know, right stuff like that. Uh, cool, man. I mean, yeah. So, like, what's next for you, man? I know that you're itching to go emit your ordinals, so inscribe, inscript your ordinals. <laughs> I mean, dude, you're, you're talking to me. You probably missed out on another quarter million. Probably. Well, <laughs> I, actually, I was invited to to make a live painting here in Narcopulco to auction it later today. Yeah. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm too busy <laughs> doing my, my inscription right now. Hey, so, okay. I so, don't want to be, be respectful with the people of Narcopulco. I love the event. Oh, so definitely, no. I'm, I'm just like... All my all 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 my head right now is is trying to create as many wow, scriptures as possible. Wow, dude! I want. Well, we're gonna end this quick, man. Uh, I promise you. I, I mean, we'll probably end it now. 
um, since you're itching to go. But how, what? Are, one last question, man. So my image of the future of BTC is that BTC is going to be this amazing art gallery. That's it. It's going to be an art gallery of very beautiful, rare, I, you know, I, digital I, art, you know? I think there's, there's no way to prevent that from happening. But yeah. also... It's important to, to, to remember that people can use BTC in, the, in any way they want. And in order to, to, to be able to see these inscriptions, it's like, it's like you need to put these, these lenses on to mm. read the blockchain in a different way right. in order for these images to, to pop up. Right? I see. So there's po boring people that are willingly... They, they are willing not to see these images. Ah, they, boring is not cool, bro. Yeah, Low cool. energy, not, we don't need that. Exactly. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't understand that. But definitely, there's people in in that, in that group, uh, and a lot of people consider uh, th that there's a, a big difference between ordinary economic transactions and a transaction that have a face or a meme or it's illustrated or is is nah, colored by something think, else man. so so there's definitely people that like those kind of gray or not not colored transactions they try to stop us man we're trying to make a quarter million dollars like they just did this morning for me for ins inscripting a little picture right exactly try to stop us i, I see a future in where like if if BTC gets more and more and more demand, blocks are going to be full and there's going to be just space for a specific, like just a, a number of transactions. And a lot of those transactions are going to be colored and, and they are going to be economic transactions as well, because the, the fact that they are colored, it doesn't mean that they are not transacting sats at the, sa at the yeah, same time. Yeah, it like, costs money to buy yeah, those uh, It costs money yeah. and there is money itself that you are sending from one address to, to another one. Right. So the fact that they are colored, it doesn't take away the reality that these transactions are Bitcoin, are Satoshis that right. you are sending from one wallet to the other. So I, I don't see these things as incompatible. Like right. I can see a future in where blocks are relatively full there are just a number of transactions on chain, everything else is on the second layer probably. And this, this few number of transactions on chain, some of them are gonna be inscripted, are gonna be colored. And that's gonna be a good thing. They're, that's gonna probably make them more valuable. That's a, what I believe that we are going, the future that we are getting into. Okay, and last question is, why are ordinals the best of nfts in all of nft history because that's what you were explaining to me and i'm like dude we got to talk about that why are they the best type of nft so my suspicion is because everything you need to know is on the btc layer one so that's the the most robust database that humans have ever created the more immutable with most hashing power behind it so it's almost unthinkable of anyone being able to change that database. Mm. So everything you need to know about these artifacts is on chain, is nice. inside that database. I get it. So, and these artifacts are tradable and they are immutable and are durable and are, are fi finalized. So, nice. so from my perspective, this is a game changer. These are the best digital collectibles that you can create wow we'll see what happens in the future but my take is that we are seeing history right now right the best digital collectors that you can create and own those are the words of the papa one of the papas of the pepes bro gus man thank you thank for you, your man. time dude this is awesome dude you, anything else you want to let people know about you where they can find you how they well, can I mean, follow you where, how they can buy your ordinals for a quarter million you can look me up as gus grillasca I'm on Twitter and Instagram and my website is gosgriasca.com. So just look me up, send me a message. I'll, I'm going to post my, my inscriptions with the Ordinal Protocol. So you can find me through my NFTs on BTC or Ethereum or any other shitcoin that I've been playing with in the past few years. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Right, peace, love, anarchy. What up, vigilantes? I am on my way to go speak to the business association of this whole area of Acapulco called Bonfield where we have Anarchapulco 
we're gonna set them up with crypto so all these people all these businesses are gonna become merchants crypto merchants so very excited about that I'm actually walking there right now so at the end of an Acapulco I felt compelled to give a workshop and it was really two workshops in one one it was on the on the topic of AI and how to respond to it as the crypto community and I we gifted you guys the tools so open source so you can learn more about how to respond to AI using proof of work and the second topic of the conversation is how we how can we onboard up hundreds of millions of users overnight into the crypto space and that has already been solved so go to this description this information needs to get out I in my opinion is probably the most the two most pressing issues of our time that are really you know come down to just one issue we need to reach hyper cryptization before AI takes over and we have the tools so we really want you guys to click in the description and watch this workshop I, I did it at the end of Anarchopoco ever after everything was done I just felt compelled I felt called to do it in my opinion is the most badass workshop that I've ever given because it has to do with what is, in my opinion, the two biggest issues in our time, AI and fixing the, the crypto onboarding problem, both wrapped in one. You guys got to watch it. Uh, I can't stress in, enough how important this, this workshop is. We're giving it away for free. So just sign up below, watch the workshop. This actually was a three and a half hour workshop and we broke it down to, there goes a puppy. And we, it, we, it, broke, it broke down to uh, like, an, after editing, it was like an hour and 30 minutes. So we trimmed the fat for you. And I hope you enjoy it. Peace, love, anarchy. Bye.